Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra. Welcome to the series where I teach you how to code in Python. Today we're getting into the nitty gritty of it for the first time, and we are talking about different data types. So there are a few uh, base data types to make a note of. I'm also going to be talking about one extra data type that you're probably not going to use an awful lot, but I feel as though it's important to actually know. Um, I've also made the terminal window a bit bigger and I've made the font bigger as well so it's easier to see. Um, however, you can run this in your idle shell or you can run this in the terminal or the CMD or the PowerShell or whatever you want. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, then watch the first video because I did explain that nearer the end of it after I did all the installs. So if you didn't watch the first video and you're now stuck, then too bad. You've got to go back and, uh, and watch the rest of it. Um, but yeah, we're going to get stuck in with our data type. So the four main ones that I want to talk about are string, integer, float, and boolean. And the fifth extra one that I'm going to briefly mention is bytes. And I'm also going to be talking about how to convert between different data types as well. So how to convert between string and integer, float and string, etc. All that fun stuff. So we're in our interactive mode. I'm just using that because it's going to be a little bit easier. There's no point in actually making a new Python script for this as far as I can tell. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about is a string. So a string is simply a collection of characters wrapped in either single or double quotes. It is basically a sentence. So you can say, for example, hello world. And this is a string. So if I, uh, if I uh, set that to a, a, a variable called s, and I do type s, which tells you the type of variable, you see it is a class of string. Um, I would not recommend uh, setting a variable to be str equals. Um, you can do that, but it's not going to end well. So just don't do that. Um, S or string or anything like that is fine, but just don't set it to that. And I'll explain why a little bit later. But an, it can be a single character as well. So you can have C equals Y. For example, I don't know why I selected Y, I just did. And you can have C, which is just Y. And if we do type C, it is a string. It's not a character. It's not like some other languages where you have to specify uh, uh, or where you have to use a different syntax to define a character rather than a string. Python just kind of knows automatically for you. One thing you may have noticed already is that you don't have to state the type of the variable when you declare it. That is because Python knows and it does it for you. There is technically a way to do it although it doesn't actually force it upon itself. I'm not going to go into that now um, because this, the, uh, these are the basics. I will go into it in a future video at some point, but it'll probably be more in the intermediate section. Uh, if you are curious about it now, look up type hint annotations in Python. And if you don't understand it, then I will do a video of it uh, later. You don't need to know any of that now. All you do need to know is that you don't actually need to define uh, any variable types or anything like that because Python will just do it for you. So I'll make a bit of space here. And now we're going to talk about integers. So an integer in the real world is a whole number. It is one, two, three, four, those things. If it has a decimal point, it is not an integer. And these same rules apply to Python as well. So we can do, say, for example, uh, num equals three. And if you have num, it just equals three. If you do type num, it is a class of int. So it is an integer. Hey, we've made progress already. Um, integers does not really a lot to say about integers. You can do uh, arithmetic operations on them, but I'll be talking about that next video. Um, and you can convert between the two, but I will be talking about that later, as I said. Uh, floats are slightly different. So for example, if you have f equals 3.5, that is a float. It is a decimal point. Or it is, um, <laughs> it's not the decimal point. It's a number with a decimal point in it. And if you do type f, you can see floats. There are some interesting properties to floats, but I will talk about those a little bit later down the line when we talk about converting between data types because that is technically part of that. Um, but a float, essentially the difference between an integer and a float is whether or not it's a whole number. Uh, you can have 3.0 and that's fine. And if you do type 3.0, that will actually register as a float, not an integer. But you don't need to worry about stuff like single or double precision or anything like that. It, it's just a float. It doesn't matter how many decimal points it has, it will just be able to work it out. Another thing as well with, uh, with the integer, I didn't mention this before, but you don't have to worry about like uh, a big in or an unsigned in or anything like that. Python, it does work that out in the back end, but it does do implicit conversions and it does work everything out where it needs to. So it doesn't matter necessarily. And the final main one we're going to talk about is a Boolean. So these Booleans are either true or false or a Boolean in the real world is a true 
or false kind of thing. Um, computers live off booleans. They live off noughts and ones, which in themselves are boolean statements, not being false, one being true. However, in Python, if you just do uh, that, it will uh, say it's an int because, well, why wouldn't it? It's a number. If you want to do an explicit true or false, you can do, uh, or you can just do true or false. And these are literally true or false. They're not numbers. If you do type um, true, whoops, it is, you can see it's a class of bool. They do function in the same way as noughts and ones. You can use noughts and ones uh, and, tr and trues and falses respectively interchangeably. But it's just, it's a easier to use true. It's also more readable just to use true and say if, you, if you're checking that something is true, it's easy to check if it's true rather than it's equal to one because that's, it's a bit, it's a bit weird if you, if you, if you start doing stuff like that. Um, but essentially, yeah, not much to talk about balls. So we're going to go straight into conversions between the two. And this is the reason why I, I said don't use str as a variable name. The same applies for int, float, and ball because these are different variables. Uh, well, these are different built-in functions used to convert. So you can just do a string of hello world, for example, or hello worlds in this case, and it will do the same thing. You can also just create an empty string object by doing that. However, doing it in quotes is actually more efficient doing that, or just doing it in a single. Again, it doesn't matter, but just be consistent. Choose one and stick to it is all I'm gonna say about that. But you can, for example, do, say, string of 56. Now, 56 is a t is of type integer, but if you do a string, it will convert it into that. So if you do type string 56, you'll see it's a class of string and not a class of int. Uh, like if we were to do 56, you'll see it's a class of int. The same thing goes for the int function. So we can convert uh, back. So we can convert a string of 56 into an integer. And uh, you can run the type statements if you want to check that. I'm not going to. And the same thing works with float as well. So you can do, say, a float of 56, and it will it will come up with 56.0. We can do, say, for example, a float of 56.3, and it will turn it to 56.3, etc., etc. One thing to remember about converting from float to int is that, say, if you did uh, int of 56.7, you would think that this would go to 57, right? Well, wrong. It goes to 56. It actually truncates it rather than rounds it. If you do want to round it, the round is available. So 56.7 does turn it to 57. And it returns an int in the same way that int does. But I'll be talking in more detail about built-ins a little bit later. Uh, but these are just some basic ones to convert between different data types. There are also some interesting properties about floats, like I mentioned earlier, and that's specifically infinities. So you can do infinities using floats. Just do um, float inf or float minus inf. And they are positive and negative infinities respectively. Now you can't just type any old string into here. If I do this, it will come up with an error. But you can do uh, positive and negative infinities using floats. These are essentially numbers, and they are technically classified as float variables. They're not known special thing, they are floats. And no number you could possibly give Python, no matter how huge, no matter how many nines, or no matter how many seconds you hold the nine button down your keyboard, it's always going to be less than a positive integer, uh, or sorry, less than positive infinity, and greater than negative infinity. It does not matter at all. Those are quite useful in specific circumstances where, say for example, you have a loop and you're manually trying to work out what the maximum of value is. Of course, there is a built-in for that, but again, we'll talk about that in the built-ins episode. And then finally, you get a ball. So balls work a bit differently. So say ball one is true, ball zero is false, ball 15, error, true or false? True. Um, I was just giving you a little bit of time to guess if you wanted to. I probably should have said guess if you want to but never mind um actually how about this uh just think about for a second and try and work out whether a ball of negative 15 would be true or false i'll give you just a few seconds to do that it's true anyone that said true you get a cookie it's imaginary but you still get it um yeah, it's literally only ball zero that returns false in the same way that a ball 
empty string also returns false, but if the string has anything in it, it returns true. So a zero or any empty iterable essentially would equal uh, false. Anything else, literally anything else at all equals true. And if you just do a ball straight up, I believe, oh, it's just a false. Huh, if you do ball, it goes false. Who knew? I actually genuinely didn't know that. But it, yeah, it goes false if you do that, but you would probably be better off just specifying false or true. So that is how to convert. That's the basic converted between different data types. The video is getting a little bit longer than I, I wanted it to, but I will briefly talk about bytes. So you have the bytes converter and you can do hello world in there. Uh, oh, you actually can't because you need to specify an encoding. Um, and that actually needs to be UTF-8. And it will convert it into a byte string. Uh, converting from a bytes to a string does not work in the same way. So if I did something like this, it, you, uh, you would see that the actual, like the byte string part of it gets, if I can find my mouse, wherever the hell it's gone. I actually don't know where it's gone. I'm just going to leave that for now. Oh, it's down there. Isn't it? There it is. Um, you can see that this B apostrophe is actually part of the string because they need to be decoded rather than just converted. Um, again, you don't need to know about bytes to to follow in the basics. I just wanted to include them in the video about data types just so you knew, uh, just so you know that they exist, you know, just so you know that they're there. But you don't necessarily need to know how to work with them right now. But yeah, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about in the video, then uh, feel free to leave a comment down below, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. While you're in there, I would recommend that you check out my socials. So I have a Twitter, Facebook library, all that good stuff. I also have a new Twitch uh, channel that I am streaming on. So feel free to follow me on that if that seems interesting to you. But I'm going to end the video here. If you liked it, say hello down below. If you really like to get consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on new future uploads. And if you really, really liked it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Of course, you don't have to. It would be really cool to give you too. With that in mind, I'd like to thank all my awesome patrons for supporting me. And I will see you next time where we talk about uh, arithmetic operators. So we're doing plus, minus, multiplication, division, all that fun stuff, all the math, all the maths, all, all the fun maths we're doing next time. But yeah, I'll see you for that.